Welcome to Electron Align, and here we're going to talk about a different kind of heat transfer. This time it's going to be heat transfer through convection. Now the basics, we're going to talk about that first. And so what we can assume here is let's say we have a wall, and the wall is kept at a certain temperature, which is different than the temperature outside. So air that's going to be near the wall is going to pick up the heat because air, when it picks up heat, it expands, it gets initial, uh, gets initial amount of kinetic energy, it's going to start moving away from the wall, there's going to be convection currents caused by the difference in the temperature, and so what we're going to try to do then is determine the dQdt, the amount of heat being taken away from the wall by the moving air. The basic equation is that it's equal to H, H is considered a conductivity constant, uh, I shouldn't say conductivity constant, but a constant related to the material, in this case the gas, the air that's taken away the heat. Um, it's also dependent upon, of course, the cross-sectional area and the difference in the temperature. So H here depends upon the, um, actually upon the conditions, the difference in temperature and the kind of fluid that is used to take the heat away with. For example, if this was a wall of a swimming pool and it was hot compared to the water, the water would take the heat away from the wall and H would be different, of course, for water than it would be for air. Now, also depends upon whether or not the wall is vertical or the wall is horizontal. So for a vertical wall, in air, H, and let me write it here, H is equal to 1.77 times the difference in the temperature to the one quarter power, and of course the units would be joules per second per square meter per centigrade degree difference between the wall temperature and the temperature far away from the wall. So notice that it's also dependent upon the delta T. So if we plug that in here, we can then say that dQ dt is equal to 1.77 times the area times delta T to the 5 fourths power. Of course, 1 quarter plus 1 would be 5 fourths, and that would be in terms of joules per second per meter squared times centigrade degree, and of course, the meter square will cancel out with the area, and then the centigrade degree here to some extent will cancel out with that. Notice that we do have to worry about the 5 fourths relative to the units, but don't worry about that. Um, let's see. Let's uh, do an example uh, for a particular difference in temperature. Let's say the outside temperature is 0 degrees centigrade, and the wall temperature, let's say it's 10 degrees centigrade, the outside wall, because it's it's not going to be the same as the inside temperature, and it's also not going to be as cold as the outside temperature. So let's assume that that's the case. For a given area, let's say that we take one square meter, area equals one square meter of surface of the wall, how much heat is being taken away through convection currents? Hmm, let's figure that out. So this would be equal to 1.77 times 1 times the difference in the temperature, in this case would be 10 centigrade degrees to the 5 fourths power, and then the unit would be, of course, joules per second. The meter squared and the centigrade degrees will cancel out. All right, let's take 10 to the 5 fourths power, so raise that to the 5 divided by 4 equals, and then we we'll multiply it times 1.77, and then we get here, this is equal to, hmm, 31.5 joules per second. Of course, that's the same as saying 31.5 watts. So there you can see that the heat being taken away through convection currents can actually be calculated. Of course, there's a lot of things at play here. What if it's a windy day and things like that? Things will make a difference. If it's a windy day, then more air will be pushed against the wall and would be moving past the wall. And actually, the dQdt on windy days will be greater than the dQdt on, uh, on non-windy days. That's also why we have what we call the chill factor. If you're in a cold area somewhere and there's a lot of wind, a lot of wind will be rushing past your body, taking heat away through convection currents, and so you'll be losing heat much more quickly than if it's a very wind-still day. But at least it gives us some measure of trying to figure out the amount of heat taken away and this is consumed, this is of course considered that it's a <clears throat> non-windy day. All right, hopefully that gives you some insight and we'll do another example on, on this and also compared to what it would be when the wall was horizontal versus uh, vertical in the future videos.